Hey guys, what's going on? David Lillian back again with another tutorial for you guys. So, first of all, uh, wallpaper of the day, Gareth Bale. Um, I thought the skin I made on this was really nice, as was the smoke and lighting. I got a bit of the, uh, the um, what's it called, masking lines to touch up, but uh, I can always do that another time. Anyways, I want to get started here. I want to make this video nice and quick for you guys, or as quickly as I can. So this is a full um, kit swap tutorial we're going to be putting Ronaldo in a Norwich City kit and it's not only going to be his upper body it's not only going to be the full you know shirt on him it's going to be the full body so he's going to be you know it's an image of him running and he's going to be in the full Norwich um shirt shorts and socks um but first of all I have two winners to announce from the uh last week's contest and the week prior's contest so the week prior's contest the question was, who is your favorite striker and who is the best, or really, who's your best slash favorite striker in the world today? And Neil Sood won, wins with his answer. Awesome vid. My favorite striker is Suarez. He's clinical. Uh, he's My favorite striker is Suarez with his clinical striking and quick thinking on 1v1s against the keeper. Couldn't agree more. Hate the guy, but couldn't agree more, Neil. Um, absolutely fantastic striker. And for uh, last week's video, didn't really get any responses. I think I got one or two. And the question was, who do you think is going to be the biggest transfer of the upcoming transfer window? Well, not the January one, which we're in now, but the uh, 2016 summer window. And that winner goes to NFA DZN, who says, I think Muller will go to Madrid for about 47 mil. Uh, that's pounds. There isn't evidence, although Madrid need a striker who can dribble and score. He is on fire. And absolutely agree with that. He also says that he thinks David Alba will make a move to Barca for a lot of money because... Alba, who is the Barcelona left back, is not performing well, but Alba is an all-in-one. He is absolutely, couldn't agree more. I don't know if Alba is going to be going to um, uh, Barcelona. I think he really, really enjoys his time now at Bayern Munich, but you never know. You know, Barca can pull out the big cash. Same with Madrid for Muller. Um, but I personally think they, they will both stay at their respective clubs. Thank you guys both for your answers. I'll be sending you DMs shortly so you can collect your prizes. The prize, by the way is one PSD of your choice from either of my pages. I'll link all my Instagram pages down in the description below. Um, question, oh, that's the telephone. Question for you this week is, what is the greatest goal you've ever seen scored, either on TV... Will you be quiet? What is the greatest goal you've ever seen scored on TV or at the stadium live? For me, my answer, 2010, Gio Van Bronckhorst for the Netherlands against Uruguay hit an absolute screamer from outside the box, went top corner, uh, actually hit, like, you want to talk about upper 90, like, this thing hit the 90 degree and went in. I think I was in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. I don't think it was the semis yet. I think it was the quarterfinals of 2010. I don't know. I didn't follow it that closely back then, but I did like to watch the games. That's really when I sort of got into it. I was really, really into it, and I got really into it in the summer of 2012, the whole game of football, soccer, but... Um, that goal uh, blew my mind, um, and I still have yet to see a goal scored like that when I've been watching a game um, in the past few years. So, without further ado, I don't want to waste too much time here at the beginning because I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, just realized I don't have a camera, a um, face cam, so I'm going to do that right now, and you guys will see me in one second. Okay, face cam back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, anyway, so without further ado, let's get started here, and we are going to drag in our base picture, and this is just going to be, uh, Cristiano, uh, running that, well, you know, first of all, we're going to do this one, we're going to, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this picture of Nathan Redmond, I think that's Nathan Redmond, P pretty positive, I know my North City, and we are going to cut out his jersey. We're just gonna just gonna mask it out, so it's gonna be a lot easier when we go um, later on in this edit. So we're just gonna press Command J on this one, use the quick selection tool, and this one you really want to make sure that you're getting in. You know, you you want to you want to do this right. If you're gonna do this and do this right, you know, if you that's my sort of philosophy with this, that if you're gonna do this, then do this right. So, um, yeah, basically I've showed you guys how to do this in a bunch of videos, but I've never really shown a I, or I've shown a the masking, this is what this process is called. So first we're just actually just going to do a shirt. Um, I've shown this process in a bunch of videos, pretty much all my videos, I think. Um, so there's really not that much to it. For those of you who haven't seen, you just go with the minus sign when you want to take more out and the plus sign when you want to, you know, keep more in. 
Um, in this case, we're going minus, getting it out. I think sometimes it's easier to actually do too much and then use that minus tool and pull out a little bit. Um, it's totally up to you as to how you want to do this. There's another thing you can use the pen tool. I'm not really going to show that because I don't really feel comfortable using it. A shortcut to that is just press P and it'll come up. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty standard stuff here. Not really anything new. The kit swap is sort of a thing that like I sort of figured it out on my own, but it takes a really long time before you can really say you feel comfortable with doing it. Like you could probably give me two pictures that are relatively similar and I could do a decent job with it. But I would say the most time consuming part of this and with the, the kit combo as well, is just finding the pictures. Like it takes a long time to find pictures, especially if you're looking at two small clubs. If you're switching Ronaldo to Barca, there's a ton of high quality pictures of Barcelona players. If you're switching Ronaldo to, you know, Cork City, that's a bit tougher because, you know, there ain't too many um, uh, high quality pictures of Cork City players that are going to be in the exact same position as Ronaldo. So the dream would be if somebody was in this exact same position. Um, it's not in the exact one as Ronaldo is in the other picture, but it will work and I'll show you guys why. So we're going to press Command X. And we have the shirt cut out, as you can see. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag in our picture of Cristiano. And we're going to double click this little icon down there so we have a totally new thing. And we're going to just take, go to our move tool and just drag this shirt right up here on into this one. So we now have this um, shirt able to move and manipulate it. So what you might want to do is, well, first you're going to size it down. Just hold down shift and resize um, by pressing command T. And you just, it doesn't really matter if you can match it up. What I like to do is I just like to make a bunch of extra layers just in case something goes wrong. Just uh, Command-G, group them in a group, all but one, and just hide that group so you don't need it really for now. Um, we can put it on the top. But go back to your layer in which we're working on, and we can do this in bits. So we can do uh, the torso and then maybe the arms and the limbs and stuff. Uh, but what I like to do is I like to sort of match up the collar as best as I can. And if it really doesn't work, then it doesn't work, and so be it. You know, we'll make it work. Um, so some good tools that you can use to really make jersey swaps work are the warp tool and the clone stamp tool. I'm going to show you how to use both of these right now in perfect situations. So we're going to start with the warp tool. You're going to go to transform, warp, and just sort of push and pull these pixels until you like it. Now, if you want to keep it into proportion, now, if you want to keep it into proportion, you're going to want to use these dots, and it's going to move a little bit sort of slower or a little bit, you know, less, but it will keep it at a better shape for you and an easier shape. If you're doing drastic changes, um, you can use the, um, you know, the middle here and just really mess with it. Um, but I, I'm going to, I'm just going to stick with uh, the, the side buttons for now. If I need to, I'll go to the middle. I don't really love having to do that because we have the clone stamp tool at our disposal. Now, this is a great tool, the clone stamp tool, so I just want to make it not too, not too fat. So obviously, pieces like this jersey up here, unfortunately, this is cutting down too much and this is cutting up too much. There's no point in trying to warp this so that it really hits that. What we're going to do is we're just going to come over here to the clone stamp tool. This is a fantastic, fantastic tool. First of all, I'm just going to bump up the resolution here. Um, let's go 2000 by 3000. Don't know if this is really going to make this any better, um, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, so just um, move it over here. And you know what? We can make it a little bit wider. I just wanted to get the pixel size up. Um, yeah, that's good. So anyways, you can see it's... I just didn't like the grid lines in the middle there. So you can see we're not just going to bother pulling this shirt up and really messing with it. So we're going to use the clone stamp tool. So come on here to the clone stamp. And you're going to make sure you're on this shirt, which is the Norwich shirt. You're going to press Option or Alt, depending on which uh, operating system you're on. And that's going to pick up wherever you're at. So if I'm on the green, it's going to pick up green. And it's going to drop green wherever I like. But I want to be on the yellow because this part's going to be yellow. So we're just going to pick up the yellow around so it looks really nice and natural. And you can size this down a bunch. And just pick up the yellow that's near it and just fill in all the spots right there. All the spots. If you want to make it a little bit harder, um, as in the brush, if you want to make it a little bit stiffer or a little bit, you know, more rigid around the edges, you can just bump up the hardness there, no problem. Uh, you know, again, take this yellow, and you're not going to want to just take yellow from any other part of the um, 
the jersey because that's not going to be the same tone. You know, it's all about the the, the um, having the correct tone in that spot. You know, if I take this green, that's going to look weird ending up there, as you can see. So just take a bunch and drop it in. Oh, that looks all right. You know, it's not perfect. I want to want to make this video nice and short for you guys. So again, not worth using the warp tool here in these tiny situations. We can actually make this one a little bit bigger. And because it's a hard brush, we can just kind of set it down. It looks a little bit funky, but that's okay. It's no problem. Uh, you know, a lot of these situations, you're only going to be judging yourself on. And, you know, if somebody else notices it, so be it. But oh, you want to make sure you are on that Norwich shirt. You cannot be on the bottom layer. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So just come there. That one I may have just been better off uh, warping it. But you can lower the opacity on this a little bit and look where to cut. So we can just come in here with a um, a hard brush, fairly hard brush. And we can just cut away at the edge here. It's no problem. Nobody's really going to judge us. So that's sort of an escape route if you really can't fix it with the cone stamp. But I like to keep it with the cone stamp just to fit the body, you know, of the person that we're doing it with. If they have, let's say, really thick legs and you're doing, you know, your jersey is from somebody with really thin legs, maybe you should just cut it, you know. Maybe you should uh, just, just cut the edge to fit the body size more. Whatever it may be, just do what you got to do. So for this, I think we can use the clone stamp tool again. So we're just going to come in here and write down. And we got some shadows here. So just make sure we're picking up the correct yellow. You can make it a little bit bigger. I think this actually may make it look better. Right down here, just right until the edge of his shirt. So right here in the corner is where we'll end it. There you have it. And I got a little bit of green over here. So make sure we're picking up that, these green pixels and just pulling them right into the edge. Remember, we are on that Norwich shirt layer, not the other one. Now, here's where it gets a bit weird. So you notice we're not going to pull the shirt over here. We're actually going to pull his skin. So we're going to go back down to the bottom layer and just pull some of his skin. And what this is going to do is this is just going to make it appear his neck is more exposed than it really is, which is really giving a natural effect to this jersey. So, or the jersey swap. So we're just going to want to redo that because I didn't like the way I positioned it. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Because again, probably nobody's going to notice unless you point it out. Um, I think in this case, because it's skin tones and they blend easier, I think I'm going to want to go with a soft brush. Because you can see how that looks. Um, just take down the hardness. And then, again, we're going to clone stamp up here. So, go to the clone stamp tool. And on the Norwich kit, just shape it. Shape it nice and tight to his shoulder, the edge of his face there. Um... So what I, I really hate how I did this here on the neck, so I'm actually going to redo this now. I hope you guys don't mind. You can skip ahead if you like. Um, I am looking at just getting some editing software, like video editing software, and just being able to edit my videos for you guys so I can make 15-minute videos that would normally take an hour. Um, I really do want to do that because, I, honestly, I hate sitting here sometimes for 45 minutes doing something that would really only take 10 because I got to spend time explaining it. And, you know... I want to make sure that I'm not going too fast for anybody, you know, whatever it is. You can also pull in the lines here um, to make it look a little bit nicer, if you like. So, uh, that looks good as far as the shirt, but we're in a little bit of predicament here with the shoulder, or the, the elbow, rather. Obviously, this elbow doesn't match up. So, what we're actually going to do is we're just going to cut that until the elbow reaches its, like, that area. I don't know what you really call that. But... Uh, we can use another shirt that we have. So, we have one right here. Just drag it out of the group. And all of a sudden, we have another shirt. So, what we can do is we can do some erasing. And this is sort of a bit of a savvy way to do things. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So, if you want to just get a clearer look at what you're doing, you can erase there. As you can see, we have some of the green from our clone stamp. Um... I think I actually did do something wrong there. But it really doesn't matter. It looks fine. Um, so as long as we can get a little bit of this Norwich yellow, it's totally fine. Watch. What we're going to do now, just to make it look a little bit less um, like we just copy the layer from above, 
You know, because that, that looks a little bit like, whoa, what did he do there? Like, he just copied that top layer. We can do some transformations. We can transform it horizontal. And maybe even vertical. Will that work? No, that's not going to work. Maybe just horizontal will do for us now. So, also, it's going to be a little bit smaller, so it's not going to it's not going to be as suspect. And then, again, you can just clone stamp if it doesn't match up right. So, what you can do is you can take a brush here and just erase where you need to. You're also going to want to make sure you're getting the shadows right. So, if you always need an extra shadow, um, well, I can actually show you what to do in five seconds. So, back to clone stamping uh, right here. Just get that. And get that. So let's say this was a very high contrast image. And I'm just going to work a little bit more on clone stamping. I'll just explain what I'm talking about here for a minute. So let's say this was a really high contrast image. And, you know, he had light on one side of his body and no light on the other side. What you could do was if you had a picture that you were putting on top, that which was really, like, not dependent on the light, like it really didn't, the light didn't match up, basically. What you could do, like, the light doesn't match up here. So this is a perfect example. I want a shadow in here. This is too bright, and that's because we flipped it horizontal. What you can do is just create an empty layer, and this is so simple, guys. Like, this is amazing. Just color with black. Just a basic soft brush. Just color with black here. I don't, this doesn't work on everything, so I can't guarantee that it's going to work. Put it on, let's see. Doesn't work great on yellow, not gonna lie. But you get my idea. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I'm sorry, that was really ter terrible. But, oh, if you, okay. So if you double uh, duplicate it, what you can do just to get a thicker um, coat there, if you will, is you can have a little bit more shadowing on the inside. Maybe that looks a little bit better. I don't really know. I can't really tell. Um, does soft light do anything better? Not really. Uh, it just makes it a little bit better. But you can do the same thing with white, you know, same deal. Uh, white doesn't really take a lot to affect the yellow, so this should be pretty easy. Uh, let's see. Soft light. Um, well, that didn't go very well. So I guess you can sort of bring that shadow up a little bit. It really... Nobody's going to notice um, unless you're going to point it out to them, basically. So I'll stick with um, what I did, but I don't really love it, and I thought I could have done better. But yellow is a difficult color to work with, not going to lie, guys. So I just say if you're working with yellow, look out. It's going to be hard from the experience that you've just seen. Anyways, um, now we're going to go back in, into this picture, and we can duplicate this again. And we're going to cut out the pants and the socks, or the shorts and the socks. We can do this all in one just because it's quick. Um, you don't need to go back for each little thing. And obviously, what another thing that you could do is if you really, really wanted to, if the background had something, you know, that you didn't like, maybe there was a, a big Norish logo back here on one of these things, or, you know, if you, if you didn't like this, if this was a little bit clearer and you could really see that, um, you know, that was Carroll Road. Uh, oh, why am I? putting in the shirt going crazy um you know if there was a, a wall a wall with like th the club logo that you didn't want on it from the other team what you could always do is just clone stamp that out and maybe put a a club logo that you wanted and just blur it so it looks like it's in the background just some ideas there um let's see so we're just going to want to get his skin out of there um another thing like i just don't like is when people call it a kit swap when they put a head on somebody else's body. Like, if I just threw Ronaldo's head on this guy's body, that's not a kit swap. You're not doing anything there. You're just taking a head and putting it on somebody else's body. I guess you could do it, and, you know, if you can make the skin tones match up, then good for you. But I personally think that's kind of cheap, and this is the real way to do it. Also, if you want the player in a certain position, like, let's say they have a signature sort of dribble that they do or a, a signature sort of shot technique that maybe you would want to put in a different kit, then, you know, go for it. Like, why do you feel restricted to putting the head on a different body when you can just put a different shirt on a different body? Just a thought. Anyways, we're going to go to the minus tool here and just throw in uh, the socks. Got to get some yellow socks in there, guys. 
Um, really going to try to speed this up here in the last few minutes. Control X or Command X to cut. There you have it. Um, you can erase the ball here. I'm really trying to go quickly here for you guys. Uh, again, editing software, it's coming. Don't worry. Eventually, it will be here and I will be able to make videos. Most likely, it'll just be iMovie, something not too um, aggressive, if you will. Uh, just looking for something standard. I used to have iMovie, but what I had to do was reset my operating system, so it takes it away. For those who don't know, if you need to reset your operating system on Mac, don't expect to keep iMovie because they'll take it away. Um, yeah, that's my tip of the day. Anyways, duplicate this, and we can just uh, go on here and just erase the yellow, the yellow socks for now, because they're not going to be in this layer at all. Um, basically, now we're just going to match up the uh, pants. So use that warp tool again, as always. I really do like using it. It's, it's a big help to sort of get you set. And then the clone stamps for those little areas that are a real hassle. So let's see how this works. That pant line matched up almost perfectly. Look at that. That is amazing. Anyways, um, we're going to do some warping again. Just on the corner here. I think I want to pull this edge out a bit. Eh, that looks all right. Don't love it. Don't hate it, though. I want to clone stamp out this... Um, this string on his pants, I don't really like that there, because uh, it's not, you know, the it's not the original picture. It doesn't really look right with the sh the way I line the shirt. So there it is, simple as you like. Um, and then what you can do really is, um, you know, we can take, you can look and you can identify what you need to take away. So we're just going to take this away here, and then. If you really wanted to, you could change the jersey number to seven. I have a Premier League font, but um, I'm not going to bother doing that now. I can do that another time if we're doing the back of a jersey where we're switching the names and stuff. I can definitely do that. Um, yeah, just take some Norwich green. That's what I'm going to call it. And just uh, throw it down on the bottom. It's not going right. Sorry, guys. Uh, what's going wrong? No. I think it went to the edge of the picture. So let's see. This is not going well. This is not going well. I don't know what's going on. Oh, no, it did work. Okay. So, yeah, you just got to pick up some, uh, some green. And, yeah. Just throw it on your picture. Sorry, I thought it wasn't working there for a second, but it is. I did not make a mistake. I don't make mistakes. Um, it, it might pick up some of that yellow line if you're around that area, but I actually want some darker green, so we can throw that in there as well. Pick up some dark. Just like that. So from a distance, that's going to look real clean, you know, down there in the corner. And then all that's left is the socks, really. So... What I always like to do is I just like to click this a bunch of times, check all around, see if I have anything, any loose strands out here. Um, and now just onto the socks. So don't like this as it's not um, hardness 100%. We're just going to take away the, um, what do you call it, the shorts. And just click, really. It doesn't matter because you're going to be warping it to Ronaldo's sock. But what you can do is just, again, match it up as best as you can. We're going to take this away for now. Um, but it's going to be duplicated. I know if you look at the layers on the side, it was organized at first, and now it's just a big mess. I always recommend uh, organizing your layers. You don't want to accidentally delete something, uh, even though you can probably just get it back in five seconds. You know, whatever. Uh, just use your warp. Get it in nice and steady. Um, should be fine. I'm not even going to bother clone stamping this one because socks are probably the easiest part of this. The only thing I'd watch out for is just, you know, get this green out of here, which you have from the leftover shorts. 
Um, basically, you get the point. I'm not going to bother with the socks or with that part of the sock. Anyways, to get this part, because I like I like how it is um, the back part of the sock. I could just duplicate it, but I like how this is the back part of the sock here. So it looks just more realistic in my opinion. So we're just going to take out this part. And we're going to use the old clone stamp tool. So we're just going to find where that ends. Cut that. Um, let's see how we're going to do this. Clone stamp here. So it may be a challenge. We can handle it. It's going to get a bit mumbo jumbo messy. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. By the way, guys, uh, Happy New Year. I uh, just try to think of things to say <laughs> as I'm going along messing about. Um, yeah, Happy New Year to all you guys. Hope you have a happy and healthy 2016 from wherever you are around the world. Um, always appreciate your views. And yeah, have an awesome New Year. Let's see. So that didn't work out. Or maybe it did. Just might have. You just kind of wing it here. Anyways, guys, my camera cut out there again. I'm so sorry, but I did finish the swap, so you guys can check this out. Um, I got the sock in there at the end. I really do like the way it came out, and I hope you did too. So, again, the question of the day, if you guys have stuck around, um, once again, if you forgot, was what is the greatest goal you've ever seen either at a stadium or watching on TV at home? Again, mine was um, Van Bronckhorst, Gio Van Bronckhorst goal in 2010 at the World Cup against Uruguay. Uh, your answer may be the same. Your answer may be different. I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Best answer wins a PSD. I'll see you guys next week. Um, that's when I'll be making my announcements for the winner from this week. You guys have been following sort of a weekly upload schedule. I'm sorry I didn't get this video out this weekend. I was busy working uh, all week, all weekend. So, anyways, if this video helped you in any way, share, form, please remember to give it a like if you're new or subscribe. Hope you all had a great day. Hope you all have a happy and healthy new year. 2016 is here, and I will see you guys next time.